I just spotted that it looks like there's some smooth bare pavement in that little pavilion behind the trees. I could dance on that. So let's go check it out. That was a lovely little dance break. I haven't done any dancing in a very long time, so that was fun. Okay, well, just leaving Walmart. I just went in to check for maybe the 35th, maybe like 60th day in a row for those Philips one blade cartridges. They're still restocking the razors, still selling the razors, but they don't ever bring back the cartridges. They don't ever sell the cartridges. They've got stocked through that entire Walmart with butane stoves, yet they never restock the butane. They just keep selling you butane stoves with no butane to, butane to run them on. It makes no sense to me. I've been here since December 31st checking at this same Walmart. I'm going to go check in here for the razor blades for the Philips One Blade as well as the butane. Why it makes no sense to me and why it's so frustrating is they keep restocking these razor bodies that come with the blade. So they can't have a shortage of the blade somewhere because they keep restocking and selling the razor itself with the blade. So they clearly just don't want you to buy a replacement and they want you to be so frustrated that you have to buy the entire razor body and blade again. The same thing goes with the stoves with the butane. Every single one of those butane stoves comes with butane in the kit, the exact same replacement butane cans that they refuse to restock at any of these stores. It makes no sense to me. I've been looking for months. Like it makes no sense. I've checked multiple cities, but specifically Brockville. Never ever do they ever replenish those razor blade cartridges ever anywhere it's clearly not just propane for the buddy heaters that has went skyrocketed in price it's also butane for any of those little coleman stoves so keep that in mind if you're planning to buy either mm, this was the last place in town i could check for the razor cartridges but they don't appear to uh, sell anything along the lines of personal hygiene anything Honestly, if this isn't a better lesson than ever to just stick with like the original flat blade razors with the one blade like Sweeney Todd, like the barbers use with some freaking barbering um, razor lotion, shaving cream. Something I've been really enjoying on my decluttering and minimalism kind of journey lately is finishing products up. Like I'm almost done this Neutrogena sunscreen here and I finished up a CeraVe one. I finished up a bunch of toothpaste since I've started Van Life. I finished a bunch of hair products, some of which I've had since 2008 that I got when I won the Cosmetology Award for hairstyling. I have one that I've been using here every day lately. Not today. I don't have any product in my hair, but... Um, this, I won this when I was 18, when I was finishing up hair school, because I had the highest grade and won the cosmetology award. They gave me a big basket of hair products that I've been trying to finish. <laughs> On the back it says 12 months. Yeah, it's still good. 16 years later. <laughs> it brings me a lot of satisfaction to finally be finishing off so many of these products that I've been trying to use for so many years, and just like getting rid of them, and then finishing up everything else that I have that's of a similar style. So finishing up all of my different curl products, gels, creams, all of that before I go buy a new one. And then it gives you like this guilt-free feeling, especially with all of the skincare that I've been using to just actually finish up all the products. And then it's guilt-free when it comes time to actually buy a new one because you actually need it because you actually use the other ones. Every long lost road leading to where you are Lovers that broke my heart They were like shooting stars Leading me on my way Into your loving arms This much I know it's true God bless the broken road
There's a cat. There's a kitty. I am so beyond frustrated today. I spent the last three hours looking for somewhere where I could just park and work. Nope. So I just drove out into the absolute middle of nowhere because I was getting so frustrated with being in Brockville today. And I came across this. I'm sure this is someone's property, but I'm not really sure what it is. I've seen something like this before. We're in farmer kind of territory. And it's full of water like a pool. <laughs> I'm gonna bet it's no kind of pool, but some kind of water source for Irrigation? I'm not sure. Anybody know? Probably something living in this mound. Bye-bye to my magical forest. What a wonderful place to work for the day. I'm sure this is somebody's private property, but... What's the saying? Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. <laughs> it didn't seem that I bothered anyone today, so it's good. On my way out. And so I turned up the radio cause there's just a little more to go before I cross that border at that sweet grass sign. I'm Albert about this piece of heaven that I found. Rocky Mountains and black fertile ground. Everything I need beneath that big blue sky. It doesn't matter where I go. This place will always be my home. I have been Alberta bound for all my life. And I'll be Alberta bound until I die. I don't even know what this animal is. Is it a groundhog? A gopher? What are you? He's coming right to me. What is he? A woodchuck? Hello. How you doing, sir? Hi. I don't know what to feed you because I don't know what you eat. Come here. Hi. Hi. I saw you up on the hill and you came all the way over here. Hello. Are you chunky man? Are you chunky man? Are you chunky man? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, look at that booty. Look at that booty. It is full on hailstorming. Wow. <laughs> now my window's stuck and won't do it back up. Come on, window. Oh, shit. There we go. Oh my gosh. It's all over my computer in those five seconds. Jeez, it's like ice. I didn't think it would soak so quickly. It's all over.
That's huge. Okay, so you moved into your van, but now where do you sleep? I have been living in my 2009 Dodge Grand Caravan named Magical Mrs. Mistopheles for the last two and a half months, or since New Year's Eve. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 15 different places where you can park your vehicle to sleep for the night. All right, so at the very top of my list, I have campgrounds. So use campgrounds. I'm currently at the St. Lawrence Park Campground here in Brockville, Ontario. This park is actually, the campground section is currently closed. So I'm just using the park section. There's a giant parking lot here. And I park here pretty much every day. There's also free Wi-Fi. So if you're ever in Brockville and you're looking for somewhere to park, at least for the day to use free Wi-Fi, I would definitely recommend St. Lawrence Park. But during the summer, this is a campsite and there are tons of lots here. So I would definitely recommend using campgrounds wherever you can find them. There's some that are free, some that are very, very cheap, but they're both public and private, depending on what your needs are and what kind of environment you're looking for. And they often provide amenities like bathrooms, showers, sometimes even hookups for electricity and water that you're not going to find at some other sleeping arrangements. So campgrounds, that's why they're number one. Number two would be national parks and forests. So depending on the national park, a lot of them you're going to be able to sleep for free. As long as you can find somewhere to pull over that doesn't say no parking and it doesn't say anything about no overnight camping, you are good to go. So national parks and forests. Many national parks also have designated campsites inside them and they allow dispersed camping in certain areas. So definitely just make sure to research which national park or forest you're considering sleeping in, but that is number two. Sometimes you may need a permit or a seasonal permit or something, so it's definitely good to look into those things before. Now, if you're from the United States, this is a huge one, but BLM land. So if you're not familiar with BLM land, it stands for the Bureau of Land Management, and it is land in the United States that often allows free dispersed camping in designated areas. So I would definitely look into what BLM land is, especially if you live in the United States, because you have all of this land at your fingertips that you can use to sleep on. Next on my list is RV parks. Now RV parks, fairly similar to campgrounds, but some of them can be a bit different in the fact that you have like your gray water and sewage disposal and all of your other amenities and hookups. Aside from that, they offer pretty similar amenities to a campground most of the time. Next on my list would be rest stops. And many highways have designated rest areas where travelers can park overnight or for a few hours if you just want to take a nap. Um, so just check with any local regulations for overnight stays. A lot of the time they will have signs right there at the rest stop, whether you're allowed to sleep there or not. So just look up for signs like that. Otherwise, check your regulations. Number six on my list, which could also be number one, is Walmart parking lots. This depends on your area. I specifically spend a lot of nights at Walmart parking lots. They're free. I can go inside and get a McDonald's coffee in the morning. I can use the bathroom and then just go on to another public area to spend my day, like St. Lawrence Park here where I have free Wi-Fi. So Walmart's you're going to have to check with the, each specific Walmart whether they are van life friendly. Some are not. Some are in plazas that are privately owned. Some of them just don't want anybody sleeping there. And Walmart is a corporation, on the other hand, in general, they definitely support van life and they consider van lifers to be some of their favorite customers because we spend so much money and we go into the Walmart like 30 days a month where most customers don't. So that's probably why they love van lifers so much. And yeah, just check with your local Walmart or whichever Walmart you're going to be staying at to see if they allow van life. And if they do, you're good to go. And next we have truck stops can be kind of similar to a Walmart parking lot, but a truck stop travel centers often have designated parking areas for large vehicles, including vans. They may offer amenities like showers and restrooms as well for a fee. So that's good as well. I personally purchase a Planet Fitness membership. So I just shower wherever there is a Planet Fitness, but a lot of people like to use private 
showers or pay per use because they don't know if they're going to be traveling where there is a Planet Fitness, which it makes sense. Do whatever makes sense for you. But the number eight on my list is casinos. So casinos, some casinos offer overnight parking, but otherwise you can just be stealth about it. But some casinos offer overnight parking for RVs and vans in their parking lots. Just be sure to check with the staff if you want to make sure that you're doing it safely and that you're allowed to be there um, and follow any guidelines that they have in place. And number nine on my list of places that you can stay is public land. And this is a very big, broad one, but essentially in some areas, public land, anything such as state forests, wildlife management, you could sleep at any kind of nature reserve if they allow parking, any kind of park where they allow parking. Again, just make sure to check with regulations and obtain a necessary permit if you need any kind of permit and you're willing to pay for it. Now, number 10 on my list is boondocking. And boondocking is one of, I would say, the most popular forms of sleeping for people that do van life. A lot of people find boondocking areas where it's completely free. They can stay there in some areas for up to two weeks at a time, some areas longer, or some areas you may be able to pay a small fee and stay there for a long time. It really depends. But boondocking basically refers to camping in a remote or undeveloped area, often on public land or in rural areas. So make sure to follow the leave no trace principles like we talked in my other video about. So basically arriving, not making making any big mess, making sure that you leave the place how you found it when you showed up. Number 11 on my list is apps that you can use or online resources. A huge, huge one in the van life community and just travel community in general is iOverlander. But you can use websites and apps specifically designed for finding campsites and overnight parking. There's also Camp and Diem, I think that's how you say it, or All Stays that are similar to iOverlander, which will tell you just certain specific spots where you can stay in any regulation about them. Now, you can also use your local knowledge if it's somewhere that you are familiar with, just knowing if there's very specific places where you can park. Here in Brockville, I know that you can park at the Metro, which is a grocery store, and it says specifically overnight parking allowed this row only. So if you're planning to park overnight, you can do it there. But again, just follow any local rules or regulations. In order to find local places, just go by your own knowledge, or you can talk to locals or other van lifers in the area for recommendations on safe and legal places places to park overnight. And then also social media groups like groups on Facebook, van life or groups on Facebook. There's lots of good advice there for where you can park in specific areas. You can join a van life or RV community on social media or Reddit where members often share tips and recommendations for overnight parking spots. And then you have street parking. In some places you can even just pay like the actual meter and sleep there right on the street. I've heard of people doing this in Toronto, so it just depends where you are. But in some urban areas, van lifers may find overnight street parking in residential neighborhoods even or industrial areas. So be sure to check local regulations again so that you don't get a ticket and you don't get towed. Number 15 and the last one on this list of places to sleep is hotels and motels. So a lot of the time people can just sneak into a hotel or a motel and sleep in the parking lot there because there's always people coming and going and you don't have a specific parking spot most of the time when you're at a hotel. And it is also typically very normal for people to have a van conversion or all of their stuff in their vehicle traveling around when they're staying at a hotel or a motel. And as well, some hotels and motels might even allow van dwellers to park overnight in their parking lots for free. So you can ask permission from the hotel beforehand, but remember to always prioritize your own safety, respect local regulations as always, and leave no trace when parking and camping overnight in your van at any of these places, really. But those are all of my different tips and 15 different places or ways that you can find places to sleep overnight when you're doing van life. After months of searching, they finally restocked the blade to my free freaking razor, Philips razor at Walmart. I've been looking for months. Now, the only problem is this is a new upgraded 360 blade, so I'm hoping that it actually works with my razor still. All right, let's check it out, because otherwise I'm gonna have to return this. I don't even know if it'll be returnable. You have to cut open the package to get it out or rip it open. I looked on the internet and they said they are compatible. Oh, it does look the same. Not like exactly the same, but it looks way longer in the photo on the box. Uh oh. It doesn't seem to go in. People online said it's interchangeable. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh my god, amazing. So these blades even work when they're dull, like way past dull. You're supposed to use it until it goes green. That's what it looks like once you've used it up. This is what the blade looks like when it's brand new. But these give you the closest shave out of like any electric blade ever. Wildly impressed. Even the dull one will still work for shaving. It's just not gonna give you like a smooth gliding shave where it feels like you're not even using a razor. And that is why I've been waiting for several months and didn't give up on this razor. <laughs> Never seen anything with retinol at this price point. So I'm gonna try that. So I've been noticing a few major, major like positives or benefits of living van life so far. And obviously there's the main ones of not having to spend so much on your living costs and having the freedom to travel around. I've definitely been spending a lot less money, but a huge one for me is being able to be consistent with personal hygiene and not so much like showering personal hygiene. I shower at the gym, but just being able to stick to a skincare routine. I've never stuck to a skincare routine consistently doing my skincare for 30 days in a row. My oral hygiene, I've never consistently wore my retainers and actually been using them every single night, brushed my teeth twice a day and been flossing on top of that and whitening my teeth. Like that's just not normal for me. Normally I'll just do the very bare minimum, like brushing my teeth. I certainly don't go through the time to put on moisturizer and sunblock and all of that. That every single day that was just something that I would go through like a phase here and there but I never stayed consistent but when it's right in your face and you live in such a small area like small environment like a van it's just so much easier I find to stay on top of things so I've been consistent with my oral hygiene with my skincare I've been consistently editing and posting on YouTube and working seven days a week I get my sunshine because I'm always in the sunshine. So there's just a lot of health benefits. I've definitely felt my stress go down a lot. I feel like I have a pretty stable routine for once, um, which is pretty weird. I hear a lot of people in van life say the opposite of that, but I'm personally not traveling all over the place and driving to a new location every single night. So I think for me, it's been really easy to actually get into a groove, which has been super beneficial for me personally. normally just come to Planet Fitness to shower and to do tanning sometimes, but I'm going to try out this hydro massage bed today. There's also something called a beauty angel. Full body, or total body enhancement. It looks like this. No idea what it does though. Everybody asks me, like, why didn't you take your dogs on the road? My best friend just sent me, like, 20 voicemails, and she's freaking out because she was just in the bathroom, and somebody started, like, banging, banging on the door, and she's home alone. And so she was like, oh my god, and got out, like, answered the door, uh, and there's nobody there. I'm talking her bathroom door, not her house door. So, and they live in, like, a hundred-year-old um, Victorian mansion. It is very haunted in there. So I'm heading over there. <laughs> It was honestly a very cold experience. I was expecting it to be warm like a tanning bed. Not at all. 
and got those good old-fashioned retainers in this morning. One thing I've realized through van life is I've been doing van life since December 31st. December, January, February, it's almost the end of three months. I have way too much laundry. I have not had to do laundry once this entire time since I've been living van life. And I'm like fresh clothes every different day. When would I have ever gone through 90 pairs of underwear living in an apartment? Not gonna happen. But since I am determined to actually go through all of my clothing and then donate it after I've worn it one last time, we're actually going through all of my stuff. And it's a lot. It has been absolutely gorgeously sunny all day. I'm not really sure how considering, or I'm not really sure how it's been in the negatives all day because it's been minus two all day long and it was minus 11 Celsius all night long last night. But look how freaking gorgeously sunny it is right now still and it's already 530. <sighs> Spring and summer are finally on their way here. Well, it is absolutely glorious out this evening, and it is going on 6 o'clock, and I've been in the van working literally all day editing videos and stuff, so I'm gonna go take a little walk in the glorious sunshine for a bit, and maybe go back to that place so I can do some more dancing. I'm just gonna continue walking in the direction of this glorious sunlight, because it is still minus 2 out, apparently, but it definitely doesn't feel like that when you're in direct sunlight. Definitely been missing out west and missing my family and my dogs a lot lately. Everybody asks me, like, why didn't you take your dogs on the road? And it's because they're not actually my dogs, they're my mom's dogs. Well, my mom has the Maltese Chihuahua named Chewy. Today I'm gonna try the massage chair. finished up at Planet Fitness, did some red light and whatever that full body thing is with the red light and then I did the massage chairs, had a shower and it's time to get some gas and head to my sleep spot. So I just picked up a couple goodies in there, one of them being this monster salt. I've never seen this one before. Camo, no idea what that's gonna taste like. Military men. I also picked up another one of the Monster Papillon, the butterfly. This is my favorite one. To me, it tastes like um, the Allen's peach juice. And then I grabbed this strawberry banana electrolyte drink. All of these were freaking way too expensive, but strawberry banana juice. I never hear of that, so hopefully that's good. And then I just grabbed a little tiny bag of chips because I haven't had chips in the longest time. Morning, you guys. I literally just, just woke up as you can probably tell. But I wanted to try out this camo looking monster on camera for you guys, so. Here's for some morning caffeine. I don't know if I've ever turned on a camera while I still look and feel this tired, but here we go. <laughs> it's absolutely glorious and warm today, so we're going for a walk. Let's go for an adventure. Um, Out of the middle of the street, maybe. <laughs> this is allegedly, according to Brockville, one of the most gorgeous, what did they call green it? Green spaces? Green spaces, that is what they, <laughs> gorgeous green spaces in all of Canada. It's the court building from like 18... A... I think it's probably like 1884, 1888, I don't know, might say on it. Probably is. 1842, she says. Wait, don't see it again. <laughs> it's right above the plaque on the door. Um, you may recognize this building from another van lifer who I saw sleeping right here. But I've loved this building for over 10 years. 
I want to give some advice for those of you who may be considering starting van life yourself. I have been living inside my 2009 Dodge Grand Caravan and we are going on month three. So in today's video, I just want to give some kind of advice and tips for those of you who may be considering... Sorry, that's my door locks going wild. Are we done? So in today's video, I just want to offer some tips and advice for those of you guys who may be considering starting van life yourself and don't really know where to start. So let's hop into it. So my number one tip for those of you guys who are looking to start van life is to plan your budget and to plan your budget meticulously. So I know that not everybody who is considering starting van life has very many options. Some people are starting van life out of necessity. Some people are starting van life to travel. So we all have different reasons why we're starting van life but as much as you can try and plan out your budget because van life can be a super affordable way for you to save money or be an emergency shelter situation but it can also be very expensive if you don't plan so i would say to calculate your expenses meticulously consider your fuel costs your maintenance insurance groceries as well as occasional repairs because once your vehicle becomes your home when you're out of a vehicle you are out of a home so i would say definitely plan out your budget and make sure to be realistic about how much money you're going to need. Then my second piece of advice is to make sure to plan the right size rig or the right size of van. So we all have different needs when we're planning out van life. So for me personally, I wanted something small that was going to be compact and cheap on gas and something that would be stealth. And that is why I chose a grand caravan myself. But for other people, you may be putting a significant amount of money in this and you may want like a larger, more comfortable rig that's something more comparable to a home. So I would say definitely do your research and figure out what size of van or what size of rig you're going to want yourself before you jump into it. So definitely select a van that suits your needs and your budget and consider factors like size, fuel efficiency, reliability, and whether you'll be comfortable living in it for extended periods of time because some people do van life semi-permanently or seasonally but a lot of people this is our full-time home so to make sure that you really consider all of those kind of things before you jump into van life too quick now number three my biggest tip would be to prepare for minimalism because obviously when you are leaving the luxury of living in a home or an apartment to go live in your vehicle there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to go without or certain things that you're going to have to downsize on or it's going to be a lot more difficult to come about those certain things i would say especially if you're going to be doing this permanently to tr to try oh my god these fucking locks Speaking of repairs, I need some wiring done on my van because there's something that causes the auto lock to just go over and over and over and over and over and it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Sometimes it even happens in the middle of the night and it'll just go on and on and on. It's the worst. But yes, preparing for minimalism. If this is going to be your permanent space, you're going to want to have as much room as possible. That's going to mean donating everything that you don't need anymore, trying to give away your belongings if you're not going to need them, or prepare for a storage unit or to have somewhere else that you can store your things while you're doing van life. My next tip would be to learn basic van life maintenance for yourself. So going back to number one is that when you're planning a budget and planning for repairs and stuff like that, that repairs can get very expensive if you are outsourcing every little thing. And believe it or not, there's actually a lot of things that we do to our vehicles on a day-to-day -day basis that you can do yourself and that you can just quickly learn on a Google search. They're not too difficult and we're typically outsourcing those to a mechanic when we could be doing it ourselves. So I would say things like familiarizing yourself with checking fluids, changing your tires. I probably am going to call somebody to change my tire anyways if it's like a big blowout on the highway just because I don't want to do it myself. And just like troubleshooting common issues and that'll save you time and money on the road. My next tip for you guys would be to join a van life community. I personally started this YouTube channel to create my own community for van life and I watch a ton of other van lifers on YouTube. So my main community is here on YouTube, but I've also joined a ton of different Facebook groups and you'll find that there are thousands and thousands of other people that are also living this nomadic van life and no matter where you are there's people in the uk the united states canada all over the world that are living in this exact same way so i think that 
For one, it's not too difficult to find other people that are also doing van life, but I do think it's important socially to feel like you are part of a community so you don't feel so isolated and you don't feel like you're doing this on your own because it can be difficult at times. Join van life communities, connect with experienced van lifers. Through online forums, you can learn a lot from other van lifers and people that have been doing this longer than yourself. Social media groups, like I was saying on Facebook, or you can find Instagram, or I find lots of communities here on YouTube. There's also like Twitter, TikTok, there's van lifers literally everywhere and local meetups there's also meetups that i find especially on facebook i find these are more advertised but there are meetups for van life all over the place all the time and lots of people that are looking to connect with other van lifers and i find that speaking to other van lifers they can provide invaluable support advice camaraderie all those important things and that leads us to my sixth piece of advice to test your rig and to test your setup before you head out on the road for full-time van life again i understand that a lot of people are seeking asylum and that they just kind of need to get into it as fast as possible and for those of you you do what you need to do but for the rest of you that do have time to test things out before if you're say living at your parents house or you haven't put notice on your apartment or your home yet to, to move I would say test out your rig as much as you possibly can take your van on shorter little test trips test out what it's going to be like to sleep in your van, maybe try sleeping in your van at a local Walmart, go to a local park and see what it's like to take out your camping gear and to cook a meal and maybe even try going to the gym and trying different things that you're going to be doing on van life as well just to get the feel of it, but mostly just to see how it's going to be functionality wise if you're going to be able to actually live within your vehicle and see what kind of adjustments you're going to have to make to your van in order to make it more comfortable or to make it more functional for you to live. I find especially for a lot of people that watch a lot of van life videos that they watch all those viral videos for van life builds and van life conversions and a lot of people go ahead and drop thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on con like buying a new rig and converting their entire rig before they've even tried out one day of van life and a lot of people after all of this investment find that this lifestyle is just not for them. So it's not even just about testing your rig to see if it's going to be functional everywhere but also to see is this lifestyle for you? Can you handle living in a vehicle and traveling around? Because it can seem a little glamorized sometimes online, depending on who you're watching, but it's really a totally different lifestyle than living in an apartment or a home. My seventh piece of advice, and this is especially for those of you guys that are planning to travel while living in your vehicle, because you can do van life stationary. I've specifically been staying in Brockville for several weeks now, and you can be also doing van life traveling all over the place. So it totally depends on you and your budget and why you're doing van life but I would plan out your itinerary. Like I would have a rough idea of where you're planning to visit, maybe creating a route on how you're going to get there or multiple different routes if one of your routes seems to go haywire or you need to readjust things. And to try and have the mindset that you're going to remain flexible and just to move with the flow of things if things don't work out exactly how you want it to, say if there's going to be a road closure. But I would definitely, definitely have a plan if you are planning to cross the border into Canada or cross the border into the United States or Mexico. Definitely have an idea of where you are going and why so that you don't seem suspicious as well. Number eight, I would say invest in quality gear. And this is a really, really big one because a lot of people are trying to cut corners when it comes to van life. And we all think, you know what, I'm just going to do this by myself. And and there's a reason why a lot of things that people don't do themselves and why they go ahead and purchase it. And it's not because that they're not smart enough to do it by themselves or they're not creative enough, but there's a lot of things like window coverings, for example, that it just works better if you just buy the quality product and you don't spend your time trying to make them yourself. You're going to, for example, save a lot of time by not making them yourself. You're going to save money by not having to buy all of those materials and then maybe screwing up. And also when you just buy the tried trusted and true product that is good quality you know that it's going to work and you don't have to waste your money kind of trial and erroring so window coverings is a good example of that this doesn't mean high price tag items there's a lot of gimmicky stuff out there that is really really expensive like we've talked about 500 dollars toilets for the vehicle on this channel before 
To me, that's obscene. But there's lots of good quality products out there that don't break the bank, but they're going to be a lot better than buying like a cheap alternative on Amazon that you're going to have to replace multiple times. It's better to just buy one good one that's going to last you the test of time. Now, my ninth tip is to stay organized. This goes back to the living minimal, and this is something that I've definitely been having the biggest challenge with living in my van because I am not doing this temporary. It's full time. I have everything that I own within my vehicle. I don't have a storage unit. So it's definitely a task to try and keep everything organized and functional. It's for me been a day to day thing of just going through and being like, okay, what do I need? What do I not need? Can I donate this? Can I throw this out? Is there an easier way to do this? And just kind of figuring it out day by day. But that's why it's great to try and plan all of these things and test out your rig before you jump into doing van life full time. In general, I'd say keep your van tidy and organized, maximize space, minimize clutter, utilize storage solutions like bins and hooks and nets. Try and use every single little different piece of space that you can because you're going to need it when you're in such a small area. And my next piece of advice would be to research overnight parking options. Again, depending on what you're going to be doing for van life, there are so many different options for sleeping. You can do camp grounds, you can do Walmarts, you can do boondocking, outbacking, you could sleep at a friend's house, you could pay for a parking spot in the city. There's so many different places, so definitely familiarize yourself with overnight parking options. And also if you're in the United States, there's BLM land, so many different options. Number 11 would be to prioritize your safety because people have asked me here on this channel as well, like, why do you care if people know if you're living in your vehicle? Like, who cares? And I care. It is a lot safer to live inside your vehicle if nobody knows that you are in it if you're going to be somewhere where there's not a bunch of other van lifers that's the reality for a lot of people that are doing van life a lot of us don't live in van life communities which are closer to like living in a trailer park where it's not so dangerous because there's so many people it's a public area and everybody knows that you're living in your vehicles so i would say equip your van with safety essentials like a fire extinguisher if you cook inside your vehicle a first aid kit emergency roadside kit for changing your tires things like that also a heat source if your vehicle dies, a carbon monoxide detector. Again, this is great if you're going to be cooking in your vehicle, but more so if you're going to be using a flame source like a buddy heater to sleep at night. Familiarize yourself with basic defense techniques as well, and trust your instincts when parking in unfamiliar places. Number 12, I would say stay connected. Make sure that somebody knows where you are at all times. Even if you are a single solo traveler, make sure that like a parent or a friend or just anybody knows where you are. People can go missing in van life it is a reality stay connected invest in reliable communication devices like a good cell phone make sure that your cell phone is charged have a good data plan have a range extender if you're traveling way into the outback a good gps navigation system as well can't hurt a mobile wi-fi hotspot to stay connected as well is a good idea and just to make sure that you yeah keep up to base keep in contact with other people in the outside world my next piece of advice would be to practice leaving no trace principles this means arriving somewhere and leaving that spot how you found it. Don't leave any garbage, don't leave any waste. Respect the environment by disposing of your garbage properly, minimizing your impact on nature. So you don't need to go like dig around and rip leaves off of a tree or things like that. Just kind of respect where you're staying. I think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. Pocahontas contest anybody and leave your campsites cleaner than you found them as a general principle if you want to go above and beyond can't hurt number 14 piece of advice is to embrace challenges if you are expecting van life to be the same every single day honey this is not the lifestyle for you so expect challenges and setbacks along the way and approach them with patience creativity and a positive attitude remember that overcoming obstacles is part of the adventure every day in van life is going to be totally different so just embrace it honestly and my last piece of advice is to enjoy the journey remember to enjoy the journey and embrace the freedom the spontaneity the fact that you moved into your van for a reason make the most of it embrace that sense of adventure that van life offers 
take the time to appreciate the beauty of nature, get out of your vehicle and go experience places, go to the beach, go on a walk, go on a hike, connect with local communities. I've personally been loving going to a bunch of local theater here in Brockville and that's been entertaining me for this last past month. And just cherish the memories that you make on the road. You may be doing this for a couple months, you may be doing this for a couple years, but this may be a unique experience that you're never going to experience ever again. So just try and make the most out of it. Try and stay positive. And those are all of my tips for you guys that may be starting out van life or considering a life living in your vehicle. And if you like this video or you found it useful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions for me and hopefully I can try and answer those for you guys as well. And subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification if you're new here and I will catch you guys in the next one. Happy travels. <laughs> I climbed a mountain and I turned around And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills Till the landslide brought me down Oh, mirror in the sky, what is there? Can the child within my heart